all the stages which i described which is like draft was presented for a uh, companies or industry to provide their comments and then it was implemented and 2001 it became effective and since 2003 uh, the europe and japan mandated the use and uh, fda uh, kind of kept it as a optional purpose yeah so that's how the uh, the ctd in terms of guidance effective uh, process had followed then uh, just to help you understand that uh, ctd is kind of ensuring we provide quality safety and efficacy information in a harmonized format it is not a global dossier because it it is still to undergo processing for a module one regional uh, documents then only uh, it is a submission ready uh, dossier. So what we compile is not a global dossier. So though it is harmonized content, it may not be global dossier. Yeah. And then uh, it is organized into five modules. We will be discussing each of those modules in the following slides now. So before we really get into the CTD, uh, real chunk of ctd i mean what is exactly what these different five modules are actually the application form would look like opening the eu application form so it is application if at all you make the application to the european agency this is what form you need to submit as an application form obviously each of the agency would have their own application form into their own regional language and that is what uh, the uh, what you say uh, the uh, kind of twist to the story that agency gets is that is why you need to have a local counterpart when you make the submission for each of the agency because their forms would be into their local language which is not possible for us to process because our if at all imagine if you had to make a submission somewhere in uh, arabic country so you need to have an application form in their local language uh, in Arabic language, and we may not have those expertise. That's the reason we have to have a local counterpart who would represent us and get our forms translated into the language that agency can understand and could be included in the package. Now, Europe, US, uh, these are certain agencies. Uh, you may uh, have some of the experiences where they would use English as a language. So US, for sure, you would have English as a language. Uh, other countries, you would find them having their local forms, uh, the application form into their local language. For Europe also, if you make the submission to the centralized procedure, you would find the application form in the English language. But if at all you make the application in a national uh, agency, so for a national license, we would be going to the European application processes in the following sessions. But just to give you flavor is, if at all the central application, which is like one European body would review for all the European countries, is what is called a centralized application. In that case, you would find the application in the English language. But if at all uh, you make the application for a national license, which is like you go and tell Greece or you go and tell France that you want the uh, ma uh, marketing authorization for selling your product into their country, and you have a national license for France or for Greece, then they would anticipate you to submit the form in French or in Greek language for them. They may not expect you to give the form in the English language. So again, you need to have a local contact there to translate those forms for you into their local language. So forms is normally information you would find in a local language. But if at all Europe countries have their forms, this is what the overall structure of the form would be only translated into their local language. Yeah, so they would anticipate us to kind of declare who is the marketing authorization holder, then um, who is the marketing authorization holder, where it is based, then uh, what what particular procedure are you expecting to apply? Is it a centralized procedure? Is it a mutual recognition? Is it a decentralized procedure? You would pick relevant agency whom all you want to apply for. So these are country codes. Uh, normally, regulatory experts are expected to know what is AT stands for, B stands for, BG stands for. So we are expected to know these country codes. 
so at would be austria b will be belgium bg would be bulgaria cy would be cyprus cz would be zec d would be germany denmark so we are expected to know these uh, country codes these are called as country codes so even if you put google and say country code you would find the complete list of a world to be honest uh, because each of these country have been given a country code and we as a regulatory expert are supposed to know these country codes then the national procedure uh, if at all we apply for so you are supposed to confirm which particular application are you doing which particular category are you applying is it a orphan designation product or is it a normal product is it a centralized what different article are you applying for from the regulation is it article 8.3 so i am not going in detail because we have a europe dedicated session in our following uh, classes that we have so i'm not taking you through details of this right now because then we probably deviate from our major section uh, session of today's is just the introduction so i'm just giving you flavor of what is ctd looks like we would be going europe dedicated session surely in our following classes so that time i'll be taking you through what is article 83 what is article 101 but i am not bombarding that information now because it would be kind of confusing that our major focus have to be on the ctd what is different content does it have uh, so i just don't want to divert your attention or dilute the topic that we are currently focusing today for today's class but i'm just trying to give you flavor that this is what application form normally looks like so you have to include all this information about your intent of filing the submission to the agency to get the approval for your uh, uh sale of a product in that country so this is what the application form it has further uh, uh, content also expected like what your manufacturing site would be where uh, what is your reference product what is your batch, batch release site so all those different manufacturing functions where what is your api where does it come from uh, which company do you buy it from and whether do you have a qp declaration for it so all that information is followed in the following form and you